Hi, thanks for watching, and I'm sure you'll recognise what's on the screen. These are what's called hexagonal basalt columns, and how these rocks got their strange hexagonal shape. The scientists have all the answers, and we know we can trust the scientists, right? This is geology.com, and what is earth science? Earth science is the study of the Earth and its neighbours and off in space. So forget that bit, right? So, because that's the Earth that they're talking about, right? So there's there's four Earth sciences. Now, geology, the science of the Earth. Geology is the primary Earth science. The word means study of the Earth. Geology deals with the comp composition of Earth's materials earth structures and earth processes. It is also concerned with the organisms of the plane and how the plane has changed over time. Geologists search for fuels and minerals, study natural hazards and work to protect earth's environment. These are the guys who will bring in the next restrictions. And this is for why. The earth's environment to protect it. Right, so that's the geology. Meteorology. Meteorology is a study of the atmosphere and how processes in the atmosphere determine Earth's weather and climate. Meteorology is a very practical science because everyone's concerned about the weather. How climate changes over time in response to the actions of people is a topic of urgent worldwide concern. The study of meteorology is of critical importance in protecting the Earth's environment. That's the key. Now, oceanography. There's the study of Earth's oceans and their compositions, movements, organisms, processes, and a way they're going about the planet again. So let's see how good the oceanographers have got over the years. Right. Despite its size and impact on the lives of every organism on Earth, the ocean remains a mystery. More than 80% of the ocean has never been mapped, explored or even seen by humans, which leaves 20%, which would probably mean they know what's off the coast everywhere, but apart from that, they don't have a clue. So we're back to what these scientists say about how these rocks got their strange hexagonal shape. Right, in many places worldwide such as the Devil's Tower in Wyoming and the Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland, ancient lava cooled into hexagonal blocks or columns. Columnar basalt is unlike normal basaltic lava as it cools, mostly commonly effusing from volcanic vents of various types, basalt tends to either form a rubbery kind of lava or peho ho a stringy ropey form of lava. Either way, both types of start lava emerging from a vent and eventually cooling a little further down the volcanic slope. Right? The geological mystery why that particular shape? Using the same sort of computer simulations engineers employ to analyse stresses in bridges and aircraft parts, researchers analyse the stresses with a thick slab of lava as it solidified. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but when I read that, I thought about something I read years ago about cowboys and the shootouts at the saloon and a guy had looked into it the, the, what it was truly like and he said in the book he said that bringing a, a gun out in the street was a very rare occasion he says most cowboys especially the guys who worked on ranches their gun was used more for a hammer mm. repairing fences than anything else so, just like that, these guys are using the wrong tool for the job. Right, so, they found as materials 
at the surface cooled, it sank more quickly than the underlying lava, which was still warm. That shrinkage led to a random pattern of cracks that typically intersected at 90 degree angles. But as the material cooled and shrank further, and cracks grew downward into a solidifying slab, small cracks began to consolidate into large ones, and the angles between them gradually shifted towards 120 degrees, the angle at which the most energy is released. The research is before online this week in physical review letters. The 100 in those 120 degree angles, the same angle between two adjacent sides of a hexagon, are generally maintained until the lava completely cools, which leads to the overall shape and the pattern of the blocks so commonly seen in nature, the researchers explain. Right, now what they don't show you here is one iota of proof of what they've just said. Nothing. Not a word. Not a, a, a picture, a diagram, a computer graphics model. Nothing. They just tell you. Right, so... Columna Basalt Towering in close symmetry, these basalt columns near Fingal's Cave form the base of the Scottish island of Staffa. Columnar jointing is a geological structure where sets of intersecting closely spaced fractures, referred to as joints, results in the formation of a regular array of polygonal prisms or columns. Columnar jointing occurs in many types of igneous rock and forms as the rock cools and contracts. Columnar jointing can occur in cooling lava flows and ash flow tufts, ichneumibrites, as well as in some shallow intrusions. Columnar jointing also occurs rarely in sedimentary rock if they have been heated by nearby hot magma. Now it just so happens that we just back for a trip to staff a couple of weeks ago and I'll show you what's just beyond where this image stops. Now, is it just me? He says it forms the base. If it forms the base, then why is there something below it? If this is the base. Right? And this is where the other image stopped. Right? So this is a small cave. The Fingal's Cave is about another 50 yards up this way or something, right? But this cave there's no access to, or oh, I'd have been in there. But as you can see, it's a, it's a sandstone cave. It's no end of day with basalt columns that form the base of the island. So that's a crock of shit. So this to me just looks like some kind of sandstone. It does not look like basalt columns in any way, shape or form. And then at the top you've got even more. You've got these other. They are definitely not the same as what's down here. So what are they? I have no idea. But they are on top of the basalt columns that are on top of the sandstone that is definitely the base. Know this. And this is the same above. This is the Fingal's Cave. And you can see the ceiling in Fingal's Cave is the same. I see all these different joints, all these, I mean they're hardly vertical. And there's some up here as well. So, right. So this is, remember that other cave is. This is why there's no access, you, you can't get down there. 
But here again, you can see this is sitting on top of this. There's, there's no way this is the base. So why they've got away with that for so long is beyond me. Has somebody ever heard that or read that before and questioned it? And again, you've got these other, well, I'm, I'm not calling them columns, because their columns are apparently vertical, and these things are hardly vertical. They're all over the place. Right, and they are sitting on top of the basal columns. So how does that, how does that work then? How does that work? How does... This lava, apparently, form a perfectly level, level edge to stop and then, but what happens up here? So, and this is a clam, what is it? Clam shell cave, it's in here. I never get a chance to visit that. But, well, these are hardly vertical columns. So how does that happen? Oh. How does that work? How does these, these, these are all of a sudden bent to the bottom? Right. So there goes the vertical column theory. And here again, this is, this is that they hexagonal columns here. Right, down the bottom here. Again, you can see that there's something below them, so they're hardly the base of the island. And this is interesting because you've got these forming here somehow. And these are almost horizontal, never mind vertical. But this image here, you've got these basal columns, then you've got another material on top of them, then there's another material on top of that, and again, they've these other columns, and that makes no sense as far as they're concerned with their theory about how they're formed. And again, it's showing you the same thing. It's hardly the base of the island. And here's more columns here. And the different ones above. Again, same thing. And here's this island. So there's very few vertical columns on this island. They are all angles. And this is at the top of these cliffs. Let's ask another scientist. So this is Arizona State University. Ask an Earth and Space Scientist. And submitted by Ryan is how are basal columns formed? And it was answered by Carla Mueller. Now, you'll find Carla Mueller all over the place, so no hard to find her. But what you won't find is anything to do with geology. Strangely enough, but she says, you are looking at a type of formation called columnar jointing. These columns of rock are most likely a volcanic rock called basalt. Basalt makes up to 90% of the lava rock on Earth. How do these basalt columns form, or more specifically, how is it possible for it to form such perfect columns, many of which look like they are hexagonal cylinders? It's due to a physical process that can happen in melted lava rock as it cools. Right. Imagine a huge flat floor liquid magma that is setting. The outer layer is starting to cool and darken in colour from orange to black. As it cools, it needs to shrink a bit 
assault material usually takes up more space than cooler ones. Because of the shrinking, the surface of the lava starts to crack, but this cracking isn't always random. Lava, like this, she's talking about. Right. In this case, lava starts to crack into regular shapes. Those shapes are formed because of how the lava cools. It starts at different spots called centres. If those centres are evenly spaced, the forces that pull inward towards the centres end up creating different chunks of cooling lava that are hexagonal, six-sided or close to it. The more uniform material of the lava is, or basically how smooth and well mixed it is, the more evenly these centres pull. That means it's more likely it will cool into hexagonal chunks. Scientists also think that faster cooling, like when lava is exposed to water, may help with the formation of these columns. I'm no seeing that happen here. This is the cooling process of lava, and I don't see any hexagonal shapes anywhere. No matter how hot or cold it is. Yeah, she goes on to say, These chunks begin to form at the top layer of the lava, which is the coolest, fastest. As lower levels of the lava start to cool, they are also pulled into the shape under each centre. In this way, you get lava cooling and contracting down into these cylinders. It usually begins its shape from the top down into the middle or even bottom of the lava flow. This is how really tall cylinders can form. And even when the material is a bit irregular, these cylinders can still form. They just might not be hexagonal. Instead of six, they may have five or seven sides or a more irregular shape. When they form strong straight columns, they are called colonnade. When they have more irregular shapes that look like they've been pushed or morphed, it's called entabulate. In, 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 what is it? Entablature. Right. So, entablature. The upper part of a classical building supported by columns or a colonnade, comprising the architrave, the frieze, and the cornice. So, that would make this the entablature. Basalt columns have formed in many places around the world that have a lot of volcanic activity. They are well known in certain places like Iceland, Ireland and the United States, such as the Devil's Post Pile Monument in California, but they are found in many, many more countries across the world. And though these columns are usually made of basalt, that isn't always the case. Devil's Tower in Wyoming, USA is a good example. It's a huge structure of columns formed in a less common type of rock called phonolite. And it also looks like a tree stump. And rock columns also are limited to earth. So I'm not even going there. Right. So next time you are in a volcanic area that has an old lava flows, keep your eyes peeled. You might just find some sculptures that were made by nature through the heating and cooling of melted rock. And I wonder how much of this stuff these people actually believe. And I'd like to finish off showing you a slideshow of these columns in various countries across the earth. And I won't get myself tongue-tied, so I'll just be naming the actual country that they're in. Like, this is in Portugal. India. Turkey. I'm guessing that's in China or something. Mishushin River. And this is in Hong Kong High Island Reservoir. In Russia, Gunung Padang, and another one there as well, and I don't know where that is. And this is Malaysia, 
Vietnam, Mexico, Germany, Northern Ireland, Milos, I guess that's in Greece, the French West Indies, California, that's the one mentioned earlier, the Devil's Post Pile, and there's the Devil's Tower in Wyoming, as some say, there's a tree stump. This is in Mexico, and who said I don't know where that is, Hidalgo, somewhere in the Caribbean maybe. And this is Tasmania, New Zealand, and this is in Mars. So anybody that's watching his good way take, see if you can try and find where this actually is on Earth. That'd be pretty cool. Right, and there's another one in Gunung Padang. And this is Italy, Romania, and the Orn Mountains, I think that looks like it's in middle of Europe somewhere. And the Buren Organ Pipes, and this is in the archipelago of Madeira, Armenia. So they're all over the place. And they ain't always vertical columns. Well, thanks for watching. Please comment.